As we all know, history tends to repeat itself. One of the best investments in history was in Coca-Cola following the crash of 87. Let's revisit one of the best companies in the world and see if the company is worth investing in today. What's going on and welcome to All Money. Possibly one of Warren Buffett's best investments of all time was in 1988 and 1989 following the infamous Black Monday crash of 1987. The crash of 1987, Black Monday, when Wall Street collapsed and the repercussions were felt around the world. Purchasing more than a billion dollars worth and getting 6% equity in the company was met with a lot of skepticism at the time. Buffett's company Berkshire Hathaway had $5 billion, which meant that the investment in Coke at the time was more than 20% of Berkshire Berkshire's total assets. Coke's sweet quarterly dividends of 41 cents per share means that Berkshire gets $656 million per year alone just in dividends, which is why this made it such a risky investment, but not for Buffett. Today, Buffett's company Berkshire Hathaway holds a 10% equity in Coke and more than 400 million shares. Not counting the dividends, Buffett's up an amazing 1,700% since his investment in 88. While this is no longer Buffett's largest investment, this is the stock that he's held onto the longest. And to this day, he's not sold a single share. As Buffett puts it, we expect to hold these securities for a long time. In fact, when we own portions of outstanding businesses with outstanding managements, our favorite holding period is forever. What did Buffett see in Coke that the rest of the investing world didn't? Buffett's longtime business partner, Charlie Munger, once stated, if smart people weren't wrong so often, we wouldn't be so rich. Seeing what Buffett saw in Coke is more than just surface deep, but we could summarize what he saw in the company with a few determining factors. Buffett suggested that the market was disregarding the global growth opportunities for Coke at the time. At this time, Coke had double revenues in the eight years leading up to this investment, and dividends had been increasing for 20 years straight, and the Coke trademark was ranked number one in the world at the time. The emotional attachment between Coca-Cola and its consumers was the strongest in the world. Coke's powerful brand image and potential reach to expand globally is what drew Buffett to invest 20% of his portfolio in the company. Buffett had his eye on Coke for a long time, and the Black Monday crash of 87 opened the door to finally purchase Coke at just the right price. One of Warren's favorite ways to value a company is called the moat. Just as it sounds, the moat is a separator, like a real moat protecting the castle. Moat is the intrinsic value the company brings to separate it from its competitors, thereby creating an effective barrier against competition. A wider moat means that Pepsi will have a tougher time storming the Coca-Cola castle. Looking at Coke's moat in the soft drink industry, Soft drinks need shelf space in grocery stores and gas stations. Monster created an amazing energy drink and had strong market. They infiltrated the high energy sports arena and had their famous M logo on everything they could get their hands on. They were doing super well, but they couldn't get shelf space because Coke and Pepsi just sucked it all up. So they made a deal with Coke. Coke licensed them and they were able to get Coke's shelf space. And after that, Monster took off like a rocket. That example shows you the power a moat-like shelf space can hold. And this is only earned through the strong branding of Coke and the 500 plus brands that Coke owned. 21 of those brands generating a billion dollars a year. So I had to ask myself, what would happen if Buffett invested in Pepsi instead of Coke? When doing this research, I found that I'm not the only one that's asked this question. And the couple of articles that I found relating to this stated that the returns would have been nearly identical. So I decided to dig a little bit deeper here. I wanted to double check to see if that was actually true. Wondering if the Oracle of Omaha just got lucky here and could have actually made more money in another business really had me curious. I looked at the historical prices of the two companies, compared them side by side, and wow, from the looks of it, Pepsi seemed to be a much better growth company than Coke was. Now I just needed to find a stock calculator that accounted for dividends. When I put Buffett's initial investment into Coke and Pepsi at the same time, the results weren't even close. Coke's strong dividends helped the company to return a whopping $120 billion more than if he invested in Pepsi over that 32 year period. Jumping ahead to 2020, and there's still definitely an ongoing battle between Coke and Pepsi. With Coke owning 44% of the total soft drink market share and Pepsi owning 25% of the total soft drink market share, they're truly dominant in their industry. And the point of entry in the soft drink market is harder than it's ever been. According to the world's most valuable brands list published by Forbes, Coke is the number six brand in the world and Pepsi's all the way down at number 29. Pepsi's spent millions to compete with Coke and to develop a strong brand, but Coke is just in a tier of its own. 
In some regions of the world, people still say they want a Coke when asking for a soda, no matter what type of soda they're actually asking for. With a great brand though, customers think of the brand name instead of the generic product. Coke instead of cola, iPhone not smartphone, Kleenex not facial tissue, FedEx instead of shipping, Tesla instead of electric vehicle, and even Netflix instead of TV. In the last two years, Coke has made some really big acquisitions, including the acquisition of Costa Coffee. Costa Coffee is a big UK coffee shop and has just started its rapid expansion. With the downfall of the biggest coffee chain in China, Luck and Coffee, about to be delisted from the NASDAQ due to accounting fraud from the company's CFO, the number two and number three coffee chains in China will now be Starbucks and Costa Coffee. Costa Coffee just announced that they will be releasing ready-to-drink products in grocery stores and gas stations, and they're going to be starting in two markets in China. It's no coincidence that this is happening around the same time that Coke just set up the world's fastest bottling line in Chengdu, China. The bottling line can make around 120,000 cans per hour, making it the fastest fully automatic production line in the world. The industry average is about a third of that. Coke also set up three additional manufacturing lines in the same region the year prior. Providing a greater exposure to Costa Coffee by putting their bottled ready-to-drink coffee in grocery stores and gas stations throughout the country at such an unseen rate could really help Coke push their new coffee company to provide a greater presence in such a growing market. The sugary drink tax was started in Berkeley, California in 2015 and is now in many major cities across the U.S. has drastically affected the sales of soda and high sugar sports drinks. Coke has responded to this trend by buying brands that are healthier and stand for better nutrition that it does not brand with the Coca-Cola name. Adwala, Honesty, and Zico are all Coca-Cola owned. These healthy drinks without additives and with organic ingredients would probably be harmed by Coca-Cola's name rather than helped by it. This shows Coke is a socially conscious brand aiming for the healthy food market. Coke is constantly reducing expenses all while pushing these healthier brands. One big change, instead of owning their bottling plants, Coke is now franchising out more and more bottling plants. Owning a bottling plant is a very low margin business. Under this franchising model, the owners record their own revenues and profits and Coke just collects the franchising fees. The first quarter earnings results were really important to see how Coke has been affected so far this year. They reported a really solid start to the year and we're expecting to meet expectations. Demand from the grocery stores just skyrocketed and people stockpiled for the quarantine. But the closures of movie theaters, restaurants, and stadiums have really taken a big hit. And these away from home channels account for about 50% of Coke's total revenue. Not to mention the global volumes declined by 25%. Coca-Cola's brand is still by far the strongest moat for the company to this day. The brand is valued around seven times more than the next competitor in this market, which is Pepsi. Coke certainly won't meet their initial 2020 financial guidance. But then again, few will this year. There's a strong belief in the investment world that Coke's earnings will bottom out during quarter two. So what price tag am I looking for in a company like Coke? Sparing you the boring math details, Coke's current price is $45. Coke's sticker price, or what the price really should be, is $39. And the margin of safety price is $34. Being a value investor is like being a really good bargain shopper. If I walk into Best Buy and see Madden priced at $45, that is what Best Buy is telling me it's worth. Or in other words, the current price of the stock. But I forgot, I can price match. So I take the game to the counter and I ask the cashier to price match this for me. She says she can price match the game for me at $39, which represents the stock's sticker price. But she tells me she thinks in about two weeks she'll be able to price match this game down to $34, or my margin of safety price. So as a value investor, I'll wait and I'll hold off on buying this game until it gets down to the price that I want to pay for it. With Coke's strong brand recognition, ambition to buy up and coming companies, dominant shelf space in the grocery stores and gas stations, their expanding presence in China, profit margins increasing 7% year over year, all while increasing the rate at which they're bottling, and not to mention they've increased dividends for 55 years straight. There will be an opportunity to purchase Coke. With expectations of earnings hitting lows in quarter two, this is a great time to practice being a patient investor and waiting to see the earnings results following quarter two. But make sure you have a game plan for if and when the company hits your pricing target. I strongly recommend buying in four different tranches as the stock continues to go down. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching and until next time, 